I have. Excellent. I trust that everyone's able to see my screen and I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes, you are. You sound awesome. good. Thank you very much. Well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ben Graham. I am uh, with business development for EAM 360 and today we're going to be uh, speaking to the theme of the um, conference and, and we're going to talk about uh, elevating asset management with our EAM 360 mobile application and the implementation process um, that my co-presenter from the city of Henderson, uh, Deborah Gasapi, um, uh, and their experience with that. So with that, let's uh, go to our next slide. So a little bit about EAM 360. Uh, it is a native mobile app that was developed exclusively for Maximo. It was launched in 2015 and is available both on the iOS and the Android platforms. We are an IBM partner, Gold, and a EM360 is an IBM validated solution. We have locations in the US, Canada, India, and Switzerland. Just a quick overview. Um, so we operate in uh, six industries, um, nine partners. We currently have a team of over 60 Maximo and mobile specialists, uh, and we've worked on over 30 projects. Some of our key clients, of course, the City of Henderson, one of our more recent implementations, Delco Water Company, again, another uh, recent implementation, General Electric is one of our clients, and the Serum Institute, which you may recognize um, for the producer of the Oxford uh, AstraZeneca vaccine for COVID-19. So a quick overview of our three role-based apps. So the technician and the supervisor app. Um, these allow technicians to view and update and reassign work actuals and, and report on those actuals for work orders. Our manager app is for the approval of purchase requests, purchase orders, and any work orders. And then our storekeeper app allows for the issues and transfers of uh, received goods and services and physical accounting of items as well. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Deborah, who's going to speak a little bit about their uh, process for selecting a mobile application and uh, and how they've uh, fared with that thus far. Thanks, Ben, and just making sure that you can hear me, correct? Yes. Okay, great. As Ben mentioned, uh, my name is Deborah Grisafi. I work for the City of Henderson Department of Utility Services. I'm a senior utilities business analyst. Our city is in the state of Nevada. We are 105 square miles, making us the second largest city in our state. Population is approximately 340,000. We have essential public services that include police and fire, public works and utility services comprised of water, wastewater and reclaimed water services. And our current asset volume, volume between ourselves and public works is approximately 610,000 assets that we're tracking inside of Maximo. Uh, Maximo and, Mo and Mobile at COH. So our journey began with Maximo back in 2010, where we implemented version 7.1. We then implemented a Maximo mobile solution in 2011. Uh, this original mobile solution consisted of providing users VPN access via Citrix, and then displaying the full Maximo application on an iPad. So this original solution was dependent upon connectivity, and then we found over time that that lack of connectivity often caused interruptions in work, uh, regression to manual processes, such as using paper forms, and then limited use in general amongst our field techs. So back in 2019, we were approved to move forward with our maximum mobile functionality project. The goal of this project was to increase usability and efficiency, as well as optimize real-time data reporting for our CMMS-related activities and this would be accomplished via a solution that offered connected and disconnected features. So the qualification process that we went through for this, we first went through and identified our business requirements, and then we performed a fit gap analysis amongst identified mobile vendors at the time to assign a rating uh, to determine how well the out of the box product features fit our future state requirements. Uh, instead of using the common good average poor nomenclature, we assigned uh, whether or not there was no gap, a gap, or a partial gap with our requirements and those out-of-the-box features. 
So our essential requirements, we said the solution must absolutely do these things. It had to be usable in a disconnected environment. It had to store forward any entered data. We wanted to present only applicable fields and or data. So we didn't want anything in the interface that our field text didn't use or weren't meaningful to them. It had to have offline mapping capabilities, recognize a user's GPS coordinates, have a spatial routing capability, enable barcoding or QR coding, be compatible with external devices such as Bluetooth printers uh, and RFID tags. We wanted to be able to capture and edit photos and attach directly to a record from the application. We also have the capability to view and play record attachments, uh, required no more than four hours of user training. And finally, it had to conform to the city's architecture and security standards. So in addition to these essential requirements the things we couldn't live without, we also went through and identified some important and desirable requirements, uh, including we wanted to have turn by turn mapping directives, uh, capture videos and also attached to a record as well as support speech to text. So after going through this analysis and conducting our vendor interviews, uh, we did select EAM 360 as our proof of concept candidate and eventual implementation solution. So what did our implementation and go live look like? Um, so first off, it involved multiple remote stakeholders, including a project team located in geographically diverse regions. So we had stakeholders in uh, the States in Nevada and California, uh, also in Canada and then India. Our application was configured to handle large am amounts of disparate data. Uh, and this included both online and offline data that we needed to be able to access. The application was required to adhere to complex architecture and security standards that we had to meet through the city to be able to uh, use this app. And then to throw additional complexity uh, into the mix, uh, part of this implementation also included standing up a mobile device management system so that we could manage the life cycle of our mobile devices and provide these devices to our end users um, and containerize business apps separate from personal apps. Uh, the application was also configured to handle complex map scenarios, again, for both online and offline capabilities. Uh, our end user training consisted of both modified in-person and virtual training sessions. Uh, whatever the COVID guidelines were at the time, we complied with those. And happy to report that we did go live in June of 2020 uh, amidst this COVID-19 pandemic. Some of the key features that we've uh, benefited from and are actively using within the application. The first one that you see there, the push notifications. So as work orders are assigned to our field text, they get those notifications, hey, this work order was assigned to you. We are able to attach files directly from the application itself. Uh, the screenshot there, you see a work order. Uh, we can take photos, videos, um, audio files, um, attach them directly to the record. Uh, as long as there's connectivity, they sync right away back to Maximo. We can print asset labels. Uh, this is helping us accomplish one of our goals of uh, putting a label on each of our assets. Uh, this allows us to print a label that includes the asset number, uh, description, and a QR code. And then when somebody goes around to identify that piece of equipment as needing work, uh, when they open their service request or work order uh, from the application, they can scan that QR code being certain that they are reporting work on the right piece of equipment. Uh, the next thing there that you see is configuring tabs. Uh, this is really a user preference. So we have some users that would say, you know, hey, these are the three tabs that I use. I want to see these first. So we've enabled um, our technicians to have the ability to arrange tabs. So the application is meaningful to them. Uh, that next one there, scan beacon for open work orders. Uh, this is a feature that is on our roadmap currently. And what this allows for us to be able to do in the future is place uh, beacons at our different buildings. And then as a technician comes into a certain range, they're able to pick up the affiliated work orders that are there. And if it's the case that they have the resources and they're already there at that location, 
Um, they can self-assign that work and complete it while they are physically there. On to some additional key features here. The first one is that work order route map. Uh, we have on the uh, to-do list, which shows all of the work orders assigned to a technician uh, for single asset work orders. Uh, this is a transportation route that shows that recognizes their starting point and shows them the most effective route to take to hit each of those stops. Uh, the second one is for multi-asset routes. Uh, so for instance, being in the water business, we can have work orders with approximately 40 hydrants on them that some type of preventive maintenance needs to be performed on. Again, this will recognize where the user's starting from and uh, show an effective transportation route for all 40 of those assets. And then those last two that you see there, assets on a layered arc map and enable or disable layers. Again, our technicians can open up that arc map. It recognizes where they're at in the world. Um, they can turn on or off those layers depending on what they want to see. If I'm a technician standing in front of a house and I'm wanting to report work um, or some type of service that needs to be performed on a lateral, then I can select on that at that lateral and it will um, create that service request or the work order right there. So key benefits. Uh, first off, we've eliminated the need to print paper copies of work orders. Um, also manually create a route map of work orders. This was a large one for our meter services section. Um, prior to enabling this route mapping capability within the app, um, we had some field text within that section that would spend roughly an hour, an hour and a half at the beginning of their shift, creating a manual transportation route for their 30 to 50 daily work orders. Uh, we've also eliminated the need to expend time on end of day work order data entry because our technicians can uh, complete that entry right there in the field from their device. We have eliminated interruptions to work and work order data entry in remote and disconnected locations. Uh, so if our technicians are in a concrete building where they used to not get connectivity, um, that they can still enter their information, it's store forwards, and then it updates those records when they have that connectivity back. We have increased the ability to capture work order history uh, via the ease of photo, video, and or audio attachments, as well as enhanced log entry features. Uh, the speech to text uh, has absolutely aided in the recording of comprehensive work log notes. Um, so a big win there. We've improved mapping capabilities um, by routing all assets and locations with an XY point, as well as identifying that user's location and displaying selected map layers. We've been able to enhance the accountability of safety plans uh, if there's an affiliated safety plan with a work order um, prior to being able to perform any work um, or record any actuals on that work order, uh, the technician has to accept those affiliated hazards and precautions. Uh, we've also improved the processes, decreasing wrench time, um, as well as the time spent on field tech training. We've been able to improve opportunity maintenance uh, via the ability to view asset work order uh, data as well as history. And then we have our future note there uh, for the opportunity work being able, able to self-assign and then complete work orders. Uh, and finally, we've been able to, uh, we've enabled continuous process improvement opportunities for work order management processes via the adaptability of the app. Um, so this is being accomplished through quarterly releases that address both functional enhancement requests and or being able to leverage new technology in the app. Trying to talk fast. <laughs> All right. So future so, plans in addition to our quarterly uh, release. Oh, am I out of time? Yeah, you're out of time. You need to, you know, uh, wrap it up. Okay. I felt like we didn't start right at 1215. So future plans, uh, okay. we're going to be implementing storekeeper and manager applications. Uh, we are working on the implementation for these applications right now. And that'll allow us from the device to complete material and service receipts, uh, print barcode and QR codes for items, uh, complete physical counting, as well as issues and returns and transfers from the app instead of the desktop. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. Well, we'll wrap up quick. Um, please join us at the vendor chat rooms tomorrow. Thank you very much to Clay and the organization. Thank you to Deborah for joining us. Um, but any questions uh, will be in the vendor chat rooms tomorrow and Thursday. So thank you very much, everyone.